Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the vote on the City Council's Committee on General Welfare. Today, the committee will be voting on five bills related to the child welfare system in New York City. This legislation is intended to improve accountability through additional reporting and disclosure requirements for the agency and to empower families in the system. Our proposed legislation consists of two bills that I'm sponsoring, intro 1727, which would require ACS to report on emergency removal cases, which means the removal of a child out of a home prior to a court hearing when during the investigation of a report of abuse or neglect, ACS determines that such a child is not safe at home. Intro 1729 would require ACS to provide information to parents and caretakers about their rights to request a fair hearing to appeal an indicated report. Indicated is the terminology used by child welfare agencies uh, to denote a substantiation of a claim. Intro 1716 by Councilmember Ayala would require additional reporting requirements by ACS requiring emergency removal data and disaggregation by race, community, district. Oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, uh, okay, sorry, it's, it's written as Ayala. Uh, by Councilmember Adams. Um, and primary language of each child and parent or guardian. Intro 1717 by Council Member Amphrey Samuel would require similar reporting by ACS on race, community district, and primary language of children and parents or guardians, but apply to every step of the child welfare system process. And intro 1719 by Council Member Chin, which would require reporting to the council by ACS regarding required regarding how long it takes for families to reach their children after placement or transfer, as well as how many children are placed outside of their home boroughs. The council seeks to address the racial and economic disparities in the child welfare system. Low-income black and Latino families comprise the majority of investigations conducted by ACS, and 75% of the children in the foster care system are black and Latino, while only 6% of the children in the system are white. We know that New York State is one of only seven states, in addition to Washington, D.C., that had the lowest standard of, quote, some credible evidence for a case to be indicated and a parent or guardian to be put on the state central registry. This was only changed to a, quote, fair preponderance of the evidence last year. Further, New York City has a relatively high indication rate of 40% compared to the 20% nationwide. Having an indicated report of child abuse can have serious consequences, not only for a family's ability to stay together, but also for a parent or a guardian's career. It is imperative that families have the information and resources that they need to appeal an indicated report of child abuse or neglect. These bills seek to ensure that racial disparities in the child welfare system are addressed and that families in the system have the information that they need to appeal if the process was unfair or wrongly decided. I want to thank all the advocates and providers who are tirelessly to get these bills finalized. And I would also like to thank my staff, Jonathan Boucher, my chief of staff, Elizabeth Adams, my legislative director, and Nicole Hunt, also my legislative director, as well as committee staff, Aminta Kilowan, senior counsel, Crystal Pond, senior policy analyst, Natalie Amari, policy analyst, and Daniel Krupp, finance analyst. And I'll turn it over in with my apologies to Councilmember Adrian Adams to speak on her bill, 1716A. Thank you so much, Chair Levin, and that's perfectly fine. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak this afternoon about my bill that we will vote on as part of the package of parental rights legislation. Intro 1716A would require the Administration for Children's Services to report on the total number of emergency removals of, every, uh, of children every quarter. This information would be broken down by race, community, district, and the primary language of both the child and their parent or individual legally responsible for the child. This set of data is so important because we know who is directly impacted by the ACS policy of emergency removals. These removals that separate families have such dire consequences for both the child and the parent. They are traumatic, life-altering events that leave families broken and torn apart, yet, from the many, many stories we've heard over the years, it appears that the communities most often impacted by these actions are low-income New Yorkers, immigrants, or people of color. 
The child welfare system overall has disproportionately impacted the vulnerable and the marginalized among us, but requiring this detailed reporting will shine a brighter light on these disparities. I believe that coupled with the rest of the bills that will be voted on today in your committee and during our stated meeting, we will bring greater transparency and accountability for the harmful actions of ACS. We should know who is being impacted by the agency's policies and the outcomes as well. Parents deserve to know their rights when their families are being separated. So again, I'd like to thank you, Chair Levin, for your leadership on this package of bills, as well as all of my colleagues who have bills in this package for putting forth such thoughtful and impactful legislation. I look forward to seeing its passage this afternoon and delivering justice to the families impacted by a harmful system. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councilmember Adams. I'd like to turn it over to Councilmember, uh, I think Margaret is um, not gonna speak. Um, and um, uh, Councilmember Amprey Samuel is, is not here, so I think that we are okay to proceed with a vote on these, uh, on this set of legislation. So I will call on um, a committee clerk to call the roll. Good afternoon. This is the Committee on General Welfare. Roll call vote on all items coupled on today's calendar. Chair Levin. Vote aye on all. And Council Members Gibson. Council Member Gibson voted aye. Council Member Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, I just want to say there was another bill that was a part of this package. Uh, it was intro 1426. Um, the bill would have required um, the New York City Administration of Child Children's Services, or ACS, to provide an annual report to the mayor and to the council with information regarding the number of patients who were referred to ACS for investigation as a result of a positive drug screening performed at a facility operated by the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation. At this moment, uh, there is assumptions as to a bias by health and hospitals to test, over test women of color in hospitals. But we don't know that information. And after today, we still won't know that information because for some reason, the city council and the administration decided to pull the bill out of this package. It is a reporting package. Um, uh, to me, it seems like a very harmless uh, uh, piece of legislation that could have given us information so that we can appropriately use this data and this information to write legislation in the future. So I'm very disappointed that that is not part of this package. I'm hoping that we can have this conversation in the near future and pass it. Um, but I do not want to take away from the good bills that are being voted on today. I want to congratulate uh, Councilmember Adams and uh, Councilmember Levin for the great work that they've done in their bills. I want to vote aye on all. Thank you so much for indulging me, Chair. Thank you very much, Council Member Reynoso. Council Member Grodenchik. Aye. Council Member Salamanca. Um, permission to explain my vote? Go ahead, uh, sir. Just very briefly, first I want to congratulate all the, the sponsors uh, on the bills, and I ask that I be added on to all these bills, 1716A, 1717A, 1719A, 1727A, and 1729A, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Diaz. I vote aye on all. Chair Levin, by a vote of uh, six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, all items are adopted. Thank you very much, Mr. Etrix. Um, I think that we are not expecting any other council members, um, committee members to join us. Uh, so with that, I will close out this hearing uh, and vote on the Committee of General Welfare. This hearing is adjourned.